Hi, I'm Susan Barlow and welcome to the April 2023 Born Review. First, some headline news and announcements. The EPA has ruled that the proposed multi-purpose machine gun range at Joint Base Cape Cod is a public health hazard. More details on that later in the show. The Garden Center at 171 Clay Pond Road, formerly called Spencer's Garden Center, has received approval to open and operate a cafe at the center. It will be called Cape Casual Cafe and Garden Center. The nursery is currently open, but it is unknown when the cafe will be ready. The annual Daffodil Festival was held at Uptuxet. This week-long event kicked off on Saturday, April 15th. There were lots of crafts for children and adults. All the kids are here. Haley and Chloe are making laurels for their heads. Okay. And Jacob's making a uh, eagle eye or cat's eye, whatever I cool. what they call it. Yeah. Right. Are and you having fun? Day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All these flowers. Wow. It's a flower tape where okay. you basically just wind it in together and then you just wrap it around. Beautiful. It's so cute. Yeah. I'm going to be making a bouquet of flowers out of my hand. A bouquet of flowers out of your hand. And they kind of look like daffodils. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Live music with Chris Carter. and many participated in the Blooming Together collaborative art project created inside the jo Joseph Jefferson Windmill. The Gray Gables Railroad Station was open for tours and photo ops. The festival was free and open to the public. It continued throughout the week with a variety of craft classes and workshops. The Army Corps of Engineers reported that over 150 volunteers showed up and removed 600 pounds of trash from the banks of the Cape Cod Canal in celebration of Earth Day on April 22nd. Mass DOT is holding two identical in-person open house sessions about the proposed Cape Cod Bridges program. They will be held at the Bourne Community Building, 239 Main Street on May 17th. The afternoon session is noon to 3 and the evening session is from 5 to 8 p.m. The meetings will provide updates on the status of the bridge replacement program, interchange alternatives, potential bridge locations, and lane configurations including maps of the program area and what to expect next. The Aptoxic Garden Club of Bourne held a presentation at the Bourne Library for Arbor Day. Justin Cefello of Bay End Farm, an organic farm and farm stand located at 200 Borndale Road, gave a very interesting talk on trees, followed by the planting of a tree across the street at the Briggs McDermott House. Our little corner of the country was shocked when locally Airman First Class John Texera, who helped maintain classified communication systems in the Air National Guard at Joint Base Cape Cod, was arrested and charged with unauthorized retention, removal, and transmission of national defense information and classified documents that he allegedly leaked to an online forum popular with video gamers. Two Air National Guard commanders, the 102nd Intelligent Support Squadron's operational commander and the Federal Orders Administrative Commander have been suspended pending further investigation. I met up with Ken Chetlin, president of the Friends of the Bourne Rail Trail, to talk about exciting news regarding expansion of the rail trail to Falmouth. Hello, my name is Ken Chetlin. I'm the president of the Friends of the Bourne Rail Trail. We've been involved since 2016. Uh, in an effort to create the Bourne Rail Trail. And we've recently had some exciting news uh, that I wanted to share. On March 7th of this year, we had a meeting before the Bourne Select Board, uh, and the Bourne Select Board voted unanimously to approve a pivot from a rail with trail design to a rail to trail design for the Bourne Rail Trail. Bourne Rail Trail is intended as a six and a half mile pathway for bicyclists and pedestrians that will run from the Shining Sea Bikeway to the Cape Cod Canal where we are now. Uh, it will complete a 24 mile stretch that will extend from Sandwich down to Woods Hole and be part of the Vision 88 
for the entire Cape, 88 miles of bike and pedestrian pathways. Uh, what happened on March 7th is really significant because the Bourne, uh, town of Bourne has now approved the pivot, and instead of building the trail next to the existing Falmouth Secondary Rail Line, we will actually be pulling up the Falmouth Secondary Line and building uh, the trail on the rail bed. Um, before that happens, however, it has to be approved by the Commonwealth um, and Mass Department of Transportation, um, and that is where we are now. The resolution of the select board has gone to the governor for consideration. The, the resolution specifically asks the governor to direct the removal of the track and the construction of the trail. Um, the really uh, great thing about this is that it will be significantly cheaper. It will be um, done significantly sooner by decades. Um, in fact, there's some suggestion based on design that there are sections of a rail with trail design that really couldn't be built. It will have a significantly reduced environmental impact in that we won't have to build 11 bridges over sensitive wetlands and waterways. So we're really excited about this. And the thing that really has stimulated this is that the Cape Cod Regional Transit Authority has obtained $20 million in funding from the federal government for us to build this as a rail to trail. That money will not be around forever, so we're moving as fast as we can to get the necessary approvals to make this happen. Um, but we're very grateful to the CCRTA for obtaining this funding. We can build this trail, uh, rail to trail, we'll have the adequate funding and none of it will be at a cost to the um, residents of the Commonwealth. So hopefully two thumbs up, we're, we're waiting to hear from the governor. We really have so many people who have contributed to this project and who are enthusiastic about it and we really owe a great uh, debt of gratitude obviously to Tom Cahir at the CCRTA, um, also to Congressman Keating who's been really helpful, who delivered the package to the governor. Um, David Vieira, Representative Vieira has been involved from the very earliest times. Senator Sue Moran is excited about this. We even at the March 7th meeting had representatives from Senator Markey and Senator Warren's offices there. And Everybody seems really enthusiastic about making this happen, uh, pulling up the track and, um, and completing uh, a really critical section of the um, Cape Cod uh, pedestrian and bike uh, pathways. Now for our top stories. There was a good turnout for town meeting on May 1st and most articles passed with little or no discussion. The ban on marijuana dispensaries was held up by just two votes at special town meeting with a vote count of 249 against removing the ban and 248 in favor of dispensaries in Bourne. At 7 o'clock there were 276 voters in the Bourne High School Auditorium. By 7.30 when the special town meeting began the number had increased to 442 and when Article 7 regarding the marijuana dispensaries came up in the lottery there was at least 497 voters present as the vote was 249 to 248. Speakers opposed to lifting the ban voiced concerns about children's safety, harmful effects of marijuana, and its use leading to illegal drug use and harder drugs. Speakers in favor of lifting the ban spoke to tax revenue that the town of Bourne is missing out on. Lori Howe of Shore Road, who filed the private petition to put the marijuana dispensary question back before voters on owns Cape Wave Cannabis in Carver and hopes to open a dispensary in Bourne. She pointed out that three dispensaries in Bourne, which is the allowed amount, would provide about 50 to 75 good paying jobs. 2021 was the first year that marijuana sales overtook alcohol sales, with the state collecting $92.7 million from alcohol and $112.4 million from the marijuana excise tax. Wareham currently has three dispensaries. Sandwich has one medical marijuana dispensary. Mashpee has one dispensary for both medical and adult use sales. There are three, there are three marijuana dispensaries in Plymouth and three in Middleborough and numerous dispensaries on the Lower Cape. Many dispensaries offer home delivery. Former selectman Steve Mealy pointed out, if you ever wondered if your vote counts, this close vote shows that it really does. 
Article 2 passed 449 to 29, approving the $77,187,218 operating budget for fiscal year 2024. It maintains a level service budget compared to fiscal year 2023. The total bottom line increase of the proposed budget is 4.55% over fiscal year 2023. Most of the increase is due to contractual increases for both employees and contracted services. Article 4 passed 272 to 198 for moving the chamber information booth from the Bourne Rotary to the VFW at 180 Shore Road. The article requested 45000 from community preservation funds for the move. Chuck Roth of the VFW spoke ab both about the preservation of the 1929 structure, which is in good shape, and how the booth will be converted to a nonprofit thrift shop to benefit veterans. Article 5 passed with a vote of 249 to 109 and without discussion. The article requested $250,000 of community preservation funds to move the historic Keene House located at 9 Sandwich Road. The house dates back to 1690 and was slated for demolition. The funds were requested by the Bourne Historical Society. They wished to move the structure to the museums at Uptuxet campus. However, if that location isn't a viable option due to road layouts for the journey or archaeological restrictions at the Uptuxet site, there was Article 20, which authorized the town to convey 3.25 acres next to the Briggs McDermott House to the Bourne Historical Society for the purpose of relocating the Keene House there. Article 20 passed, 138 in favor, and only 14 votes against. Article 16 failed with a no vote of 137 and an in favor vote of 51. Article 16 asked voters to amend the Town of Bourne Wetland Protection Bylaw so that the Conservation Commission could consider waiving the strict requirements in limited cases. Speakers John York and Dave Dimmick opposed the waiver and pointing out that people with money and or influence may get an unfair advantage and would dilute the Bourne Wetland Protection Bylaw. The EPA has released its draft report after 20 months of scientific study regarding the proposed construction of a multi-purpose machine gun range at Joint Base Cape Cod. The estimated 1.3 million bullets per year at the proposed range would result in a nearly fourfold increase in the total annual bullet load currently being deposited into the berm and range floors of the active small arms training ranges. From 2018 through 2022, the total number of bullets used across active copper bullet-only ranges was only 1.27 million. The proposed total bullet use at the proposed expanded range would eclipse that number in just one year. Bullet components at the multi-purpose machine gun range will be annually released to the proposed gun range berms and range floor. They are copper, lead, antimony, manganese, nitroglycerin, strontium, and chromium. These components total more than five and a half tons per year. There is no anticipated closing date for the range. Like other ranges, it will likely operate for many decades. Assuming a 50-year time frame under the proposed annual loading and assuming limited range mitigation, there could be more than 275 tons of bullet components released to the environment there. Finally, EPA is mindful that it, along with the Department of Defense and other taxpayer-funded entities, have expended more than $1 billion and directed substantial technical resources towards cleaning up past contamination of the sole source aquifer that is below the range. One environmental policy imperative for the region is to protect this investment and ensure that reasonable further progress is made toward cleaning up the aquifer.
Adding an additional set of unknown and poorly understood risks could undercut or reverse progress that has been made to date. Again, the proposed multi-purpose machine gun range would be located over our sole source aquifer and the Safe Drinking Water Act takes a strong precautionary approach to such circumstances to prevent the contamination of Cape Cod's only source of drinking water. The EPA has provisionally concluded, subject to public review and comment, that the construction and operation of the multi-purpose machine gun range would have the potential to contaminate the aquifer as to create a significant public health ha hazard. The EPA will accept public comments on this proposed decision for 60 days until June 26. Written comments may be submitted to r1ssa comments at epa.gov. The EPA will also hold a public hearing to receive oral comments on May 24, 2023. The public hearing will be held at the Center for Active Living, 70 Quaker Meeting House Road in Sandwich. The formal public hearing will begin at 7 and there will be preceded by a public meeting beginning at 6.30 p.m. Don't forget to vote at the May 16th town election. Incumbent Amy Kular is running for re-election as moderator. Anne-Marie Sarunin is running unopposed for the open seat on the select board. Three candidates running for two seats on the Board of Health for three years. They are William Dusty Meyer, Robert D. Collette IV, and William Bill Doherty, and one seat for one year of an unexpired term. Incumbents Kathleen Fox Alfano and Christina Maria Produz are both running unopposed for re-election to the Jonathan Bourne Public Library Board. There are four candidates for three seats for a term of three years on the planning board. Incumbents Jean Aravitz, M. Elizabeth Brown, and Sandra E. Goldstein are all up for re-election, and John J. Duggan has thrown his hat into the ring. The planning board has one member position for an unexpired term of two years and one for an unexpired term of one year. James J. Robinson, Jr. is running for unopposed for the two-year unexpired term, and William Dusty Meyer and Catherine DeMeo Walton are running for the one-year unexpired term on the planning board. Two positions are open for the Veteran Memorial Community Building Trustee Board. Incumbent Christopher J. Farrell is running for the veteran position, and incumbent Donald Lonigan Beals is running unopposed for the non-veteran spot. Three member positions are open on the school committee. Incumbent Carrie Maria Schofield is up for re-election, and Donnell Lonegren Beals and Kendall and D. Kavanaugh Gagney are running unopposed. Incumbent Robert L. Buckley is running against Greg Felino for a spot on the Bourne Recreation Authority. Here's what's happening downtown. The structure known as the Azac Shoe Store at 140 Main Street has received clearance from the Bourne Historical Commission for demolition. The commission reviewed the building that was built in 1913, meaning it was more than 75 years of age, and that triggered a Historical Commission review and needed approval. On April 11th, the commission approved the demolition, clearing the way for new construction for a pros proposed mixed commercial retail space on the first floor and six apartments above. Downtown is getting another new restaurant with Jersey Mike's, hoping to open later this month. Jersey Mike's will open next to the Starbucks on Belmont Circle. The new Buzzards Bay Farmer's Market is open every Wednesday in Buzzards Bay Park. Here's some exciting news for downtown Buzzards Bay. Calamar Apartments, aka Connect 55 Plus, are open and occupied. There are a few units left for rent. Here's an update on our town services. Bourne Recreation Department has announced its summer camp program for ages 6 to 13. Choose the whole summer session from June 26 to August 11th or choose two week sessions. Sign up before the spots are filled. A kids fishing derby will be held on Saturday, June 3rd for ages 3 to 14 years old at 
Queen Sewell Pond, also known as Bumps Pond, on Cherry Street in Buzzards Bay. Prizes are awarded. Cost is $5 per entry. Register at bornrec.com. A volleyball clinic will be held from July 31st to August 4th from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. at the Bourne High School Gym for grades 4 through 8. The cost is $105. Bourne Rec is holding Canalman Hoop School with Bourne High School varsity basketball coach Scott Ashworth on Monday, July 10th through Thursday, July 13th at the Bourne High Gym for grades 5 through 8. The cost is $105. Register by July 5th, bornrec.com. The Bourne Recreation Department is collaborating with the Bourne Public Schools for a seven-week summer program called Slide Into Learning. The program is for grades K through 5 and runs from 8.30 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. Mondays through Thursdays from July 3rd to August 10th. A weekly fee of $110 per student. Call the Rec Department 508-759-0600 extension 5302 if you need more information. The Residential Recycling Center and Icewim will go to their summer schedule after Memorial Day. They'll be open seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. The Board Food Pantry is located at 121 Main Street and is open Tuesdays 9 a.m. to noon. If you're in need of Meals on Wheels or if you can help deliver meals, call Elder Services of Cape Cod 508-394-4630. The Council on Aging, located in the Bourne Community Building, 239 Main Street, offers a variety of programs to those 60 years and older. Tai Chi is starting the first week of May on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock. $7 per class and just drop in, no need to register. Medical release is required prior to the class. Men's Fitness with Nikki Courtney of the VNA happens on Fridays at 9 a.m. from May 19th through June 23rd. This class is free. Thinking about your cholesterol? There is a cholesterol clinic Monday, May 15th at 9 a.m. Please call the COA office to register. The Walking It Out Challenge presentation with the VNA will be held on Wednesday, May 24th at 10 a.m. Call the COA office to register. Music therapy concert with the star of the TV show The Voice, Cara Brindisi. Cara is touring senior centers across New England to showcase and educate on the therapeutic benefits of music. Call the COA to reserve your seat. I saw this performance a few years ago and it was fantastic. Matt York and the Songs of Johnny Cash will be held on Wednesday, June 21st at 1 p.m. Call the COA office to register. There's lots more programming at the Council on Aging. Check out their newsletter online at townofborn.com. Click on the Council on Aging department and then select Newsletter from the menu on the left. Or stop by and visit the Council on Aging at the Bourne Community Center 239 Main Street. And while you're there, you can drop off eyeglasses to the Lion's Drop Box, donate non-perishable food items to the Food Pantry Donation Box, pick up a novel for a small donation, or return your library book to the drop box near the gym entrance, and much more. Here are some beautiful photos taken by area photographers showing the beauty that surrounds us.
see what's happening at the library. Hi everybody, I'm Kathy Fox Alfano of the Library Board of Trustees and with me is Iria Finn, our esteemed director. Oh wow, I'm esteemed. Excellent. She is. <laughs> she is. So what's happening? Well, first I wanted to thank everybody for voting for the two projects that were in the special town meeting on Monday night. We approved both a feasibility study for the library and a make safe project for the front of the library so that the bricks don't fall down on you. At town meeting, we did approve a library of things. It was mixed in with other things, but we got it approved. So tell us, what is a library of things? A library of things are objects, we'll call them objects, that you might not own, you might only occasionally need, you don't really want to go out and buy, um, you might want to try it, and the library will make it available. Okay. So, for example, your kid loves frozen. We might have frozen cake pans. In my house, anything gardening, we'll have probably a pH tester. Well, we have been fortunately, very fortunately, been bequeathed money from somebody who loved both the library and golf. I'm sure there are a lot of those people out there. I but think this is a big golf town. Yes. So this particular person left money for us to have both new golf books as well as lessons at the Pocasset Golf Club. Wow, that's cool. So yeah. what do you mean lessons? Well, there's going to be a clinic on the short game on May 8th and on putting on May 15th. We are starting a crochet club. The knitters wow. have gone wild. So we are offering <laughs> a learn to crochet program. It begins May 9th from 1 to 2 p.m. They're going to do a basic headband, which is just learning the basic simple stitches. Mm -hmm. Do you sign up or just show up? You can just show up. You don't have All to right. bring anything. If you have a project that you're working on, you can. We provide right. the needles. We provide sample patterns. Wow. We have people who have been donating their um, yarn stash, mm -hmm. which I didn't know was a thing. I think it's like a book stash. Oh. Like when you go to a book sale. Oh, yes. So, one of my favorite days of the year is coming up soon. Christmas? No, the book sale. Oh, <laughs> when yeah. is it? It is uh, Saturday, May 13th from 10 to 2. And show up and get some great bargains. The books are $2 for hardcover and large paperback and 50 cents for the smaller paperbacks. And then I think children's is four for a dollar. Our writing group met for the first time in April and our second session is May 17th from yeah. two to four. We have a facilitator who's going to kind of lead you through guided questions and what guided guided exercises so that you can start your writing habit we have beginners we have people who have been self-published that sounds really interesting you should come I will you have a lot to say oh yes <laughs> We have partnered with the Visiting Nurses Association. They've been coming on Tuesdays from 10 to 11. They've been doing blood pressure screenings. They've been answering questions. If you have a new medication, um, she's just been a nice resource. So we've expanded it a couple more weeks. Okay. And on the 23rd, she's going to be doing cholesterol screenings. Okay. Because she is doing screenings, we ask that you register so that she knows how many kits to bring. Normally, it's just a drop in. How do you feel about toddlers? <laughs> okay, if you have a baby or a walking toddler and you're looking to get out and meet other mums, okay, maybe you're beyond that phase, but you don't have to laugh. <laughs> um, Miss Angie has some spots in her group. She okay. usually meets out in front of the library in the circle when it's oh, that's uh, the nice. weather is nice. They do books, they do some songs, they do some activity, body movement if your toddler is walking. So this is a special group at 9.15 on Mondays, um, infants up to walking toddlers, and there are spaces left. 
Um, she's presenting a program called Nature Plant Gardening for Wildlife. Things aside from pollinators, like, okay, did you want to feed certain butterflies? Did you want to feed certain types of birds? An interesting program. Yeah. It's at 1 o'clock on Saturday, May 20th, here okay. in the meeting room. Uh, and you do not have to register. Um, and it'll be about an hour. Here's an update on COVID-19. The 14-day statewide positivity rate for two weeks ending April 27th is reported to be 3.4%, down from 4.7%. Barnstable County has a 14-day positivity rate of 3.9%, down from 5.38%. Bourne's 14-day positivity rate is 2.76%, down from 5.4%. Falmouth is 2.54%, down from 5.4%. Mashpee's two-week positivity rate is 3.38%, up from 3.11%. And Mashpee has a two-week positivity rate of 4.25%, up from 3.65%. Free at-home COVID tests are set to end on May 11th, but are still available at the Bourne Community Building and Town Hall and the Bourne Library while supplies last. Here's a look at the calendar to see some upcoming events. Every Wednesday, noon to 7, head over to Buzzards Bay Park for the Buzzards Bay Farmers Market. The Farmers Market's held every Wednesday. Vendors offer fresh produce, artwork, crafts, and other items. May 19th through May 29th, it's the Rhododendron Festival at Heritage Museums and Gardens. Thousands of world-famous rhododendrons in over 100 varieties offer an explosion of spectacular blooms throughout Heritage. Tickets can be pre-purchased online or upon arrival. The circus is here. Flip Circus is in Hyannis at 769. INO Road until May 15th. You can buy tickets online at flipcircus.com. The Cape Cod Canal Visitor Center is open for the season. The spring hours are Tuesday through Saturday, 10 to 5, and admission is free. The Bourne High School Drama Club presents the Broadway play Newsies on May 11th, 12th, and 13th at 7 p.m. Tickets can be purchased online at our dot show slash BHS Newsies. On May 13th, the Abtuxic Garden Club of Bourne holds its annual spring plant and bake sale at the Pocasset Community Building from 9.30 a.m. until noon. The Bourne Library holds its annual spring book sale on May 13th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. rain or shine. And don't forget, May 16th is our town election. On May 20th, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., the Buzzards Bay Eagles host the second annual Canal Walk for Compassionate Care ALS. Over 30 vendors, food trucks, live music, face painting for the young at heart, bouncy house, and more in Buzzards Bay Park. To sign up to walk or learn more about Compassionate Care ALS, visit buzzardsbayeagles.com. On May 27th, it's Operation Flags for Vets at the National Cemetery in Bourne, a very moving event. The public is invited to volunteer to help place over 77,000 flags at the graves from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. It's preceded by a ceremony at 10 a.m., followed by placement of the flags. Volunteers are needed for removal of the flags on June 4th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. The Memorial Day ceremony at the National Cemetery will begin at 1 p.m. with a motorcycle parade and then the ceremony. Cape Cod Cares for the Troops holds its 19th annual Troops in the Spotlight opening ceremony, 1130 Sunday, May 28th in Hyannis at Cape Town Plaza, and it runs through midnight. Honor our fallen heroes and their Gold Star families. June 10th from 10 to 2, it's the annual Strawberry Festival at Swift Memorial Church at 10 Williston Road in Sagamore Beach. On June 17th, it's the Bourne Historical Society's annual Strawberry Festival held at Uptuxet. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with what's happening in Bourne. 
go to youtube.com and search for Born Community TV. Please support programming at Born TV by going to borntv.com and click on membership. Well, thanks so much for watching this episode of The Born Review. I'll see you next time.